Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Della's Voice. I am so excited for today's interview. As a matter of fact, I have been waiting a very long time for this interview to happen, and I'm so happy and excited that you're finally here. Dr. Stacy Cooper Latimer, or as we call her, Dr. Stacy. She's a holistic wellness leader. She's an inspirational keynote speaker. She is the founder of Lifestyle Balance Solution. And she is, among so many other books she's written, she is the international best-selling author of What Self-Love Got to Do With It. I'm so excited to have you on here today. And I want to thank you for taking a time out of your busy schedule to be on Della's voice. So welcome, Dr. Stacy. Thank you so much, Della. Nice to have you here, for sure. And you're so beautiful. Your, your hair is so gorgeous. I love it. Well, thank you. I've always, I've always loved to have blonde hair, but. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it is what it is. <laughs> yes, exactly. Take so the graces is, that were given to you and make yeah, the most of them, right? Yes, you're right. And it's like so many, so many things, we are usually not happy with what we have. So I'm learning to, to like my uh, dark brown hair. Dr. Sacy, why are we talking about immune system, especially during this time? Well, it truly is the hottest topic right now because of everything that people are experiencing. And truly, it is the best way to improve your life, to improve your health, and to be able to be as creative and productive as you can. Because without your health, we've really come to understand that there's nothing else if you don't have your health. Because you may be killing yourself as an entrepreneur, working so hard to create whatever it is that you're creating. But if you're not there to enjoy it in the end, what's the point? Mm, truly, what's the point? Um, what do you see happening right now during this pandemic, especially? What is happening, in your opinion, to people and their immune system? There, there is so much happening because there's so many different facets that you can come at this from. Um, one of the biggest things that I've noticed, not for me directly, but for those around me, is the media and so much fear that has been instilled um, through all the broadcasts and the information. And that really shifts the energy that people are resonating with. And disease breeds in fear and in that negative energy. And so perpetuating those messages and that information to that degree, uh, you know, shut off the news, get rid of CNN. And a lot of it isn't um, informational, it's, it, it's not what you need to be hearing. What you need to be hearing is how you can help yourself, how you can stay healthy, how you can step out of that fear and begin to boost your immune system and your whole being in a positive direction. Because when you come from a place of gratitude and knowing that everything will be okay, that there are definitely steps that you can take to heal your health and knowing that you have that power in your hands and within you, that changes everything. It changes your energy. It changes how everything interacts and responds. It changes how you interact with others. It changes how others interact with you because you are projecting a different energy when you make that shift. Um, that's interesting because at, especially during this time, we ought to think about the things we can control and the things we cannot control. And what is happening, so much of what is happening around us is totally out of our control. And that can cause a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress on people. And so many of us are not aware that there are things that we can actually control. And so strengthening our immune system is one of those things that we can control, isn't it? It absolutely is. You have so many 
tips right at your fingertips that you perhaps don't even realize, but are so easy and simple that you really do have the power right within your own hands. Mm -hmm. So let me start this conversation by this. What would happen if people don't pay attention to their immune system? That's when they run into big trouble. So oftentimes, you know, something may start within your body and you may get that little inkling, that little tap on the shoulder of something not being quite right. And the first thought that my patients often tell me when they finally come in to see me is, you know, I thought it would go away by itself. Mm. You know what? It didn't get there by itself. So it needs some assistance. You need to take some measures. You need to change what it is that you were doing because obviously what you were doing got you to where you are. And if that's not where you want to be, then you need to change what you're doing in order to come out the other end in a different fashion and with different results and with a different perspective. So, you know, when your, your body gives you messages all the time, and when you're not listening to your body, that's when you run into trouble because then the messages get a little bit louder and a little bit louder and a little bit louder till it's no longer just a tap on the shoulder, but it's a two by four <laughs> whack over the head. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and then change really has to happen fast because now you're in a crisis situation and it's, it's not as easy to come back from a crisis as it is from those little inklings that were the warning signs long prior to that crisis. I hate to put you on the spot, but could you think of an example of someone who came to you and said that exact same thing? Oh, you know, I, I thought there was something there, but I, I thought it would go away by itself. Absolutely. I, I have a million of them. Being in practice for over 23 years, I hear that statement almost every day of my practice. So patients will come in and, you know, and, and oftentimes, you know, typically it will be a low back strain or something like that. Oh, you know, I wasn't doing anything. I just woke up one day and it was a little bit stiff and creaky and I thought it would go away. Meanwhile, it's now three weeks or three months later, they have sciatica all the way down to their toes. And now they're coming to me saying, I need you to fix this. Mm. Well, if they had to come in, the instant that it happened, it would be taken care of in a very short course of care. Whereas now if you have sciatica all the way down to your toes, we got to bring that all the way back up and out of the leg and out of the back. And that takes time and a lot of healing because nerve irritation and nerve damage has already been done when that has progressed all the way down to the toes. So it's the same with anything. If you start with some indigestion, and it becomes a little bit more persistent, where now instead of once a week, you're experiencing it once a day. And then you get to the point where you finally show up at your medical doctor and saying you have terrible heartburn, and now they prescribe a medication. The problem is that medication is actually stopping a normal function of your body so that you can then carry on symptom-free. The point is, if you change what you're putting in your body and how you're fueling your system and actually give it what it needs, your body can heal and you don't need to shut down the normal functioning processes. Cholesterol elevation is a prime example of this because through the North American diet, generally it does not fuel your body well. I use the example, it's like putting diesel fuel in a gas engine. No wonder our bodies are deteriorating. So when you're eating that way, cholesterol levels begin to increase. So what the doctor will say is, all right, your cholesterols are elevating. We need to bring that down. So they will give you a medication in order to do that. What that does is it actually shuts down your body's normal production of cholesterol. Your body does make cholesterol. Every single cell membrane in your body is made up of fat and cholesterol is a necessary component of that. So instead of changing the fuel you're putting in your engine and managing your cholesterol levels naturally through your food consumption, what they do instead is shut down your normal process in your body of cholesterol production. Therefore, you can eat whatever you want. And that's how they manage the cholesterol levels. To me, oh, that's completely no. backwards. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I find that nowadays there's more and more information on how to uh, let your body heal yourself. Do you find that your, your job is getting easier or is that just my perception? Um, my job is to educate patients so that they have an understanding of what their body does on the inside, because so many don't know that, you know, unless you have studied physiology and histology and pathology and all of those things to know what truly happens inside, you don't. And, you know, oftentimes when you eat something, it goes in one end and comes out the other, and you don't give a second thought as to what happens in between all the way down. And that is the key where everything happens. And so I love sharing that information with patients because they never knew it. They didn't understand it. And when they do have that understanding, it opens up so many doors for them because then I also show them how to swap out those bad fuels, that diesel fuel for great high octane fuels to fuel their body with, which is natural and easy and delicious. And it really changes everything. You know, so many times patients are told, oh, they need to lose weight for a whole list of conditions and situations, not only for blood pressure issues and cardiovascular problems, heart disease, cholesterol levels, obesity, diabetes, back pain, knee pain, all of these things and so many others, they're told to lose weight, but they're never told how to lose the weight. And in actual fact, losing weight is not the key to getting healthy. It's actually the opposite. You need to fuel your body differently in order for it to heal. And as it heals, that's when your body begins to function better, your metabolism improves, and that's when weight loss is the end result. Mm -hmm. And that's a complete shift from what people are told. Mm -hmm. The weight loss is just gravy. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that. So how do you help people, Dr. Stacy? Do you have a program or how, how, do, how do you go about helping people? I have many avenues that people can step into working with me. And the first is a 10 down in 10 days guide, which is a simple free guide that you can receive at 10down10days.com. And that is 10 simple steps that you can implement just 10 minutes at a time for nourishing your mind, body, and spirit naturally. And it begins with how you wake up in the morning, the intention that you set for the day. It's, it also involves getting outside in nature. Talk about meditation, quieting the mind, how you hydrate your body and the importance of that. Also the foods that you eat and boosting your vegetable intake as well. Healthy, happy fuels for your system also talks about moving your body and stretching and how stretching keeps the joints supple and mobile and helps to reduce injury and dysfunction. But we also talk about your bedtime routine and getting great rest because without rest, your body can't regenerate and rejuvenate and your body heals during sleep. And sleep deprivation is such a huge issue for so many people. Sleep interruptions, it's horrible. And so getting that under control too is a gigantic component to healing your health. Mm -hmm. So that website again, one zero. One zero down, one zero days.com. One zero D-O-W-N, one zero D-A-Y-S.com. So and then I also teach a free web class every Tuesday evening. And Ooh. you can join that. Yeah. It's an interactive free web class where I talk about how you get to fire your diet because diets truly do not work. And I uncover the mechanism as to why that is true. And I share with you how you get to fire your diet. So there's no more calorie counting. There's no more portion control. You actually get to eat the foods that you love. We just make them a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. So you can join me Tuesday evenings at 90 day new you. Dot com. That's 90-D-A-Y-N-E-W-Y-O-U.com. Awesome. Wow. You're a truly busy lady. And you have a lot of energy. I know you're a runner, Dr. Stacy. Yes. Um, and so, so when did you start running? 
Well, you know, I was always active through high school. I figure skated, I played soccer, baseball, um, track, cross country, all of that sort of stuff. So that and was like 10 years I ago, can, right? Right, just 10 years ago, exactly. <laughs> and, um, and I continue to be active all through my pregnancies. I was always doing step classes and aerobics and fitness has always been a big part of my health journey. And um, even, you know, in recent years, I played co-ed soccer. I coached my daughter's soccer team. And, um, you know, she's 21 now. So even when I was playing on the field with, you know, 16, 17, 18 year olds, and here I was, you know, 49 and 50 years old, which was a blast. And um, so a friend of mine, Jim Hetherington, in October just passed, he decided that he was going to run his first ever marathon. So I said, what the heck, I'll do it with him too. So who on earth starts to train for a marathon in November? I don't know, but I do. You. And so did Jim. <laughs> yeah. And it turned out that this was the best winter to do that because the weather was fantastic. Over Christmas break, we had no snow. I was out on the road every day and it was wonderful. And I started from nothing. I started from completing one kilometer in whatever fashion that looked like. It certainly wasn't running a full kilometer. I can tell you that. And now today... So I started in November, it's now May 13th, and we are running 16 kilometers in less than wow. two hours. Wow. Yeah. So, and the whole point was we set out milestones. Running a marathon, that's a great big goal. And you don't do that stepping out the door on day one. You have to train, you have to practice. And every single thing that I teach, I teach in exactly the same way. Whatever goal you set for yourself, it has to be attainable. And then you create milestones as you go along that are achievable. Because if you just set that great big goal without any milestones, you will never get there because you will be so discouraged and frustrated because you can't run a marathon on day one stepping out the door. And so we decided that we would run a 10 kilometer in April because there was a local event here in Brantford, the Boston Brantford Classic. We'd run a 10K in April. We'd do a half marathon in July, and we would do the full marathon in October. And that's what we decided. As we got into our running and our training, as it turned out, we were ahead of schedule because by April 19th, that was when we were supposed to run 10 kilometers. Well, we were already doing that by April 1st. And so me and my big mouth said to Jim, I said, hey, what if we make it to 15 kilometers by April 19th? We will have done one and a half of our goals in the time frame that we had set. Now, isn't that a great way to achieve your outcomes, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And it was doable because we set manageable goals. And so we did that. And then he decided that, well, if we're going to bump that up, then let's do the half marathon in June rather than July. So we are well ahead of schedule. And it's so much fun. But the other key component I will tell you is an accountability partner. There is no way I would be where I am right now with my running if it were not for my accountability partner. Because even when I'm out on my own, Jim and I run together every week together on Friday mornings. And if it wasn't for him, I know that if I was to go out and try and do 16 kilometers all by myself, this would get in the way. And I would not be as successful as I am with having him running with me. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so accountability in anything that you do is a key component to your success. It sure is. And you, just so you know, your eyes light up when you talk about that. <laughs> I can tell you're really enjoying it. So absolutely, um, it, anything that we do, any goals that we have set, it's one thing to start because we are so enthusiastic. We have the energy. We are, you know, we were doing this with focus. And then something happens. We run out of steam. And, um, you know, then we're, then thing, things don't look as important as they did before. What is your suggestion? Because I feel like this, this works for any goal, whether it's, and strengthening our immune system or losing weight or running for a mar marathon. So part of it, you said, is the accountability buddy. How else 
do you suggest people keep motivation? Absolutely. Thank you for asking. And this is a key component in my 90 day new you program. Um, and it begins with mindset. But the second thing is journaling. So getting clear on your intention as to what your great big goal is, is the essence of it all. Because if you don't have that great big goal, and you don't know the why as to why you're doing it, then there's nothing behind it. There's nothing that's going to propel you forward. There's nothing that's going to spur you on to accomplish it. There's no energy behind it. There's no motivation behind it. And without that, there is nothing. So when you set the intention and you get quiet and listen truly deep within in regards to what your heart desires, no matter what it is, it, it doesn't have to be running a marathon. It's whatever it is for you. That's what you need to listen to and get clear on. And journaling that and writing it, and not just writing it once, but revisiting it each day. Every single morning when I'm up at 5 a.m., this is my morning routine. I get up, I hydrate my body well, I go outside, connect with Mother Earth, and I present my ask to the universe. What do I need help with today? What question do I have? What um, situation do I need guidance with? I, I give my ask to the universe and then I, I share my gratitudes, at least 10 things that I am grateful for every single day. Some days are the same. Some days they're different. Some days there's more than 10. There's never less than 10. And then I come back in and that's when I journal and I read. So I journal what my great big goal is. So that energy is brought forward in me every single day. I write down what my great big goal is. And my mission personally is to heal the health of the world naturally through my mission of eliminating the diabetic epidemic globally. That is the mission that I'm on right now. And that's why I'm so passionate about sharing my message with everyone that I come in contact with because the foods that we're eating truly are killing us. And you can reverse that when you understand what happens inside your body. And it's not hard. And so after I've written my mission and my great big goal, then every single day, and I've learned this from Bob Proctor and Jack Canfield, and I've studied under many mentors. And this is a combination of all of that information coming together. And I write down my four big steps today that I are, I'm going to achieve to get me closer to my great big goal. And that's what, where I get my drive and desire from and my motivation, because I know every single day, there's at least four things that I'm doing that are taking me and driving me there. And that's where the motivation comes from. So whatever your goal is that you're working on, whatever you want to accomplish, and it may be in multiple areas of your life, nourishing your mind, what are you doing there? How are you supporting that? Nourishing your body through foods that you eat, nourishing your body physically through movements that you're doing, and nourishing your spirit, right? To encompass all aspects of your life because that's truly how you create balance and heal your health because you can eat well 100% of the time, but if other areas of your life are stressed, your body is not going to function optimally. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to ask you about your personal story because I know that's really inspiring. So, and that's the reason why you started on this path that you're on right now. Um, in helping the world. Do you mind sharing your personal story? Dr. Not Stacey? at all. Thank you. Thank you so much for asking, Dylan. Um, it, it's an unbelievable story and it still baffles me at times because as a healthcare professional, I'm trained in health and wellness. And even that education level wasn't enough to safeguard me from suffering my own health crisis. And part of that comes from as, as growing up, I was always taught to always do for others, always share what you have, you know, always giving. And that put me in a place where I was giving to everyone else, but I was never giving to myself. I was never giving myself time. I was never giving myself energy. I was never giving myself the resources that I was providing for everybody else. And that led me to being in a place of being exhausted completely depleted, frustrated, 
living a life that um, I was the run, I was running on the hamster wheel, right? I was just go, 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 and never replenishing or slowing down. And even to the point where, you know, I would be um, attending aerobics classes and step classes, and, and that's what I was so used to doing. And you know what, that really mirrored my entire life. Because the first time I attended a yoga class, we would get in the pose and we, you know, holding the pose and my mind is going, okay, I'm done. All right. What's next? Hurry up. Let's go. What are you doing? Because that is where my mind was at. I could not get into yoga, but now I will tell you that Shavasana is my very most favorite part of yoga. <laughs> Who would have thought, but it's so vital to slowing down and bringing the mind and the body to peace and calm and just to let it go so that it can restore. So what happened when I was 33, life events, so many of them all in a very short period of time and every single life event, whether you view it to be in a positive direction or a negative direction, every single one of them takes you away from that balance point, that homeostasis right? Either too much or too little, right? And uh, the birth of a baby, the loss of my dad, running the practice, all of those things, and so many others, just really had me stretched beyond my limits. And you just have to listen to your body, because it will tell you. And that's what happened to me. So those little taps on the shoulder, I didn't listen to those. Those little mm -hmm. stronger, you know, pecs, I didn't listen to those either. And it took the two by four over the head to really get my attention. And it's only at that point that I understood that I was this close, but I was granted a second chance. So and what did I that two by four look like? Um, I had a heart attack at 33 years old. Oh. All from the stress and tension within my life, from all of the things that... Um, just uh, all the responsibilities that I took on and I was not being responsible for me at all. You know, I was, I was giving, 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 giving until there was nothing left to give. And your body will tell you. And many people have experienced very, very similar situations. And, and it can come in many different forms, right? It can come in any type of health diagnosis. It just so happened that that's what it was for me. But anyone who is not feeling their optimum health and wellness level, their peak potential, that's their body telling them stuff is not working well. That's the body telling them, hello, you need to change something. That's the body telling them you need to find a better way. And that's what I love to share with people is truly how to find the better way, because that's what I took the time. I took 18 years to research, discover, refine, test. I was the guinea pig, and I made sure that I checked all the checks and balances and tested it inside and out until there were no more what ifs. And that's what I've created, and people are just loving it because they're getting results. Um, so I hate to think of what would have happened if you didn't think uh, turn things around for yourself right and there are so many people who go that route and something does happen to them and they still don't um, learn from the lessons mm -hmm. and so what is your message to someone like that I just know that I am so thankful. Um, I know that I was given a second chance for a purpose and a reason. And I grabbed onto that and I ran with it. And I know that's exactly why I am here today. Um, because at that moment, if things had gone differently, our fourth child would never have been born. And our three children would grow up without a mom. And my husband would be a widow. Um, you know, so... Those that have found themselves in that situation may feel that they don't have any alternatives. They don't have any other choice. They don't know which direction to turn or how to change it. And my message would be, don't give up. 
there's absolutely a path for you. And if you're hearing this, then this may be exactly it. Because nothing happens by coincidence. Everything is intended. And messages show up for you at exactly the time when you need to hear them. And if you are hearing this, then there certainly may be something that you can garner from this and that you can heal your health. And it's easier than you think. There's so much misinformation that you have been told. And that's what I share in my web class. And there are so many um, just realizations in regards to how much sense it makes when I share how the body works on the inside. And then it's like, why on earth are we doing it this way in regards to the way you know normal society is doing it? And it all comes down to money and manufacturing and, and production. And that's not what makes people healthy. It's what- Can you give us a couple of examples of what people I have discovered and they're like, oh my God, I can't believe this. Oh yes, for sure. <laughs> so, um, so one thing, um, okay. So cravings, there's so many, I had to sort through my Rolodex right there and figure out which ones I want to share first. And um, I want to see, cra- sorry to interrupt you. I also want to see if, um, because we are streaming live on Facebook, and if there are any questions uh, people can pose here, I, I can, I can also. That would be fantastic. Up. Yes. So, um, so let me see here. So yes, I, I want to encourage people if you are um, watching this and if you have any questions, put them down here and we'll ask Dr. Stacy. Um, Absolutely. We'll answer our questions. Okay. So I, yeah, go ahead. You were going to give us a couple of examples of, these overwhelming yes. information that hit people in the head. So have you ever had a food craving? Hmm. Yes. Chips. Yes. <laughs> and do you know that almost a hundred percent of women and 74% of men, that is so unfair, um, suffer from food cravings. Why is that? Just why? Okay. Explain this to me, please. Why is that? <laughs> I, I don't know why, but it's just so unfair that 100% of women have cravings, you know, because it always seems that the men's metabolism is always faster than ours. Right. And they're always can eat whatever they want and we can't and, you know, yes. that whole battle. Yes. Anyway, in regards to cravings, did you know that it has nothing to do with your lack of willpower and it has everything to do with your brain? Explain a little bit more, please. <laughs> so cravings one of the root cause factors of cravings is wheat wheat is the comfort food so you know um, wheat has the same chemical structure as opiates and you know opiates are bad for you and they go through the a place in the brain called the addiction center it's called the opiate cascade so what happens is When you consume wheat and you eat it, first of all, it's highly processed. So it doesn't take long at all for your body to absorb it into the system and it travels in your blood and goes to your brain. And because it has the same similar chemical structure as opiates, it goes through the opiate cascade too. And because wheat is already highly processed, it doesn't last long in your body at all. So it's metabolized very quickly. So as it's gone through that opiate cascade in the brain, all those endorphins are released, dopamine and those feel good hormones. And that's where you get the pleasure from. But because it doesn't last long, it's not long before your brain is going, Ooh, I need more of that. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? And that's where the craving comes from. Because if you were truly hungry, you would eat the carrot sticks that are in the fridge. You know, you're not hungry. That's the That's craving. crazy. So, okay. So you said opiates, what, what contains opiates, for example, like drugs and stuff? Yes. Yes. Okay. O- so, opioids. Yes. So that, that makes sense because they hit the special opiates cascade in the brain and the brain um, releases these endor- endorphins, feel good hormones. 
and you automatically want more. And that's how yes. addictions happen. And so you're yes. saying wheat does exactly the same thing. It does. Ah, that is yep. cool. Cool, but not cool. Not and cool. So, but cool to food know. Yes, food manufacturers know this about wheat. So they put it in everything. Wheat is hidden everywhere. Wheat is in tomato soup. It's in taco seasoning mix. It's in salad dressings. It is everywhere. The reason being of this cascade, because then you crave more, you eat more, therefore you have to buy more, you consume more. So you spend more, they get rich and you get fat because you're simply craving. Yikes. And did you know, I know, <laughs> did you know that if you just go five days of wheat free, you can eliminate your cravings completely. And I have hundreds of testimonials of people who have done exactly that. That's why I created my cookbook, the Healthy Fuels Cookbook, which is wheat-free, dairy-free, sugar-free, gluten-free, and delicious. And it's simple, easy recipes. And if you eat just from the cookbook, it has smoothies, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and dessert, because what's life without dessert? You eat just from the cookbook, therefore you're consuming no wheat, you're consuming whole natural foods, real food, delicious food, and you no longer crave in the evening. Your body is full, it's satisfied, it's working the way that it's supposed to, you're putting high octane fuel in that amazing engine, and you eliminate your cravings for good. Because on my web class last night, one of the biggest questions that I had repeatedly over and over was the nighttime nibbles, the nighttime snacking. My biggest problem is that that was their biggest problem. And it all stems from wheat. Wheat is also so inflammatory in the body. It leads to digestive issues, malabsorption issues, gut issues. There are so many. And because wheat is highly processed, that means that it, it floods your bloodstream very quickly because it doesn't take much for your digestive system to break it down because it's already broken down. Wheat spikes your blood sugar levels higher and faster than white table sugar. The glycemic index of wheat is 72 and that of white table sugar is only 51. Crazy. So there's the Whoa. diabetic connection. So if I gave you one reason to get rid of wheat, I just gave you five reasons to get rid of wheat. No kidding. And, and you wouldn't think that about good old wheat because it's so simple and wow. So uh, breads, pastas, they all have wheat. chips. Oh, what? <laughs> okay, really? That's amazing, Dr. Stacy. So you're staying five days without wheat in your diet and you can eliminate a lot of cravings exactly and then if you go back that easy. right if you go back obviously they'll come back right this is right one but why would you right right <laughs> okay i have a question is there yes. wheat in alcohol rye is made from wheat Mm. Okay. Okay. Now vodka is grain based, but you can get potato vodka as well. So if you need to drink something, <laughs> <laughs> I don't consume alcohol. I don't consume coffee. I don't consume anything but water uh, to drink. And uh, yeah, so decreasing sugar, wheat and dairy are the three most um, important things to eliminate, not reduce, because if you reduce it, you're still consuming it. Mm. So eliminating wheat, dairy, and sugar are the three most inflammatory things you can remove from your body and improve its function fast, quickly, and easily. Wheat, dairy, and sugar, you said. Wow. Mm -hmm. So Cancer um, loves sugar. Cancer loves sugar. Why is yeah, that? It's a simple fuel. Why? Yeah. Because, so cancer is... And every disease process is simply your body moving away from normal into a dysfunctional state. 
every single disease. That's why every single disease is reversible when you change the environment you provide for your body. When you change how you're fueling your mind, body, and spirit, you can reverse your outcomes from any disease. Because your body adapts to the environment that you provide every single second of every day. So you can change the environment you're providing simply by gaining better information in regards to what you're doing. So cancer is where cells, every cell divides and, and replenishes and, and changes. That's why our bodies continue to shed cells and that's why you need to sleep well so it can rejuvenate at night and repair. But cancer is when cells have lost the genetic control of normal rate of growth. So cancer cells grow really fast and really big. And in order to do that, they need energy. Therefore, sugar is a very simple form of energy. Um, sucrose is in its simplest um, building block uh, absorbed by the body. Therefore, cancer cells uptake that really fast because it's already readily dissolved and it flows through your system really quickly and it's delivered very efficiently. And cancer will uptake that and that just feeds it more fuel. That's like adding oxygen to the fire. It just fans the flames and it just grows that much faster. Cancer loves sugar and it loves an acidic environment. And every food that you put in your mouth, your body's a chemistry lab. It either, every food either leaves behind an acidic residue or an alkaline residue. As you shift to a more alkaline diet, drinking alkalized water, Kangen water is a great source for that. And that's what I use at home. I only drink Kangen water, 9.5 pH. An alkaline body resists cancer. An acidic body, cancer thrives. A sugar body, a cancer thrives. Get rid of the acidity and get rid of the sugar and cancer does not grow there. So wow. you can change the environment you're providing for your body. And I, I, can, I can see how um, some people would say, um, well, it's too late now. I've lived it's never this. too late. It's never too late. It's never too late. Mm. Your body adapts all the time. So just think if you go to the Arctic and it's freezing cold and your body is going to start to shiver because it's now in a new environment. It's in the cold. It's going to shiver to create energy, to warm up the body, to keep it warm and functioning. Now, you know, you, if you're out there and you're not protected well, you will die in the Arctic. Mm -hmm. But as an example, when you go to the desert and it's hot, your body adapts to that environment too. It will begin to sweat. That's your body's natural cooling mechanism. Those are two extreme examples. But what I'm sharing with you is that your body is taking into account everything that is going around you, in front of you, inside you, outside of you, and it is adapting to that all the time, every millisecond of every moment of every day, depending on where you're sitting, what you're listening to, what noises are going on, who's pulling up in the car in the driveway, you're al alerted to that. Your body and your brain and nervous system are in tune with all of that. When you change what it is that you're providing for your system, your engine will run differently. It's never too late. It's never too late to change how you're fueling your body. It's never too late to help your body heal. It's never too late. And why would you wait? Why not start right now? Honestly, honestly. Um, so there are so many people watching and I want to say hi to some of, some of the people who are watching. Robert J. Moore is watching. Hello. And he says, hello, ladies. <laughs> uh, nice to have you here. Um, Paula, the Candia is watching as well. Uh, Robin Bromley, Bassett, uh, Jim Jackson, Colleen Woodhead. Uh, thank you so much for, for watching everybody. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments. Uh, I want to ask you a simple question. And um, I, I, I know that you have answered to this. <laughs> Why aren't people taking this seriously? 
Uh, convenience. That is the first word that I would say is convenience. It's convenient to run through McDonald's. It's convenient to go through the drive through We, our society has become disposable, instant gratification. And even relationships are showing this as well, because if a relationship isn't working, you know what? Divorce. It's convenient. It's easy. Why bother working at it? Let's just change it. Now, in regards to your health, convenience is not the way to go. Because as I mentioned earlier, the North American diet, the highly processed and refined foods are killing us. You see it. This is the first generation of children who will not outlive their parents. As an industrialized, you know, first world country, we have great sanitation, great health care. We have, you know, great shelter. We have so many blessings around us, but yet our food is killing us. This is the first generation of children that will not outlive their parents. And you can see ah. it in regards to obesity and the onset of diabetes that is occurring. That's exactly what's going to happen. And that is what breaks my heart because it is completely preventable. Get rid of the colorings, the sugars, the amount of sugar that people are consuming in one day is what they truly should consume over the course of three months time. Our pancreas no was not way. designed to process. Oh. Yes. It's incredible. That's crazy. As you it said is. that, I got goosebumps. This is the first generation who are not going to outlive their parents. That's scary. Just take that a look around. It me. is. Mm, that really and me scares too. me. Yes. Um, uh, Robert says, my body is not ad <laughs> adapting with my lack of sleep. You talked about Yes, lack sleep. of sleep. Yeah, lack of sleep interferes with everything. Because if you're not getting great sleep, your body can't repair or regenerate. So and that's another thing, if people are eating too late in the evening, all the snacking that used to go on before they stopped consuming wheat and dropped their cravings. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not um, anymore. When, We're not doing that. Yeah, anymore. exactly. When you were eating later at night, and then you immediately go to bed, your body doesn't know whether it's supposed to be digesting or whether it's supposed to be resting because you just confused it. You're at night, your body is meant to rest, to restore. Restoration begins with rest, to rejuvenate, to clean up the debris cells that were um, utilized through the course of the day and to repair. And if your body is instead digesting while you're laying in bed trying to fall asleep because you ate too late, then you've divvied up the resources and your body isn't working effectively or efficiently. Something's if you're not getting, give. that's right. And if you're not getting great sleep, if it's interrupted, if you're asleep for two or three hours and then you're up and doing something else and then you're back to bed, you're never getting into that deep restful state where the restoration can happen. The hours before midnight are much of greater um, benefit than those after midnight. So going to bed earlier is a good thing. So what, is, what does that look like? So um, I time? go to bed at nine. Yeah, I go to bed at nine, 9.30 and I'm up at five. Wow, that's... For a lot of us, that's just not possible because we we work. And I, I mean, I'm looking at my lifestyle and a lot of times I'm still working till till eight o'clock and nine o'clock. I'm just getting home. So everything's a choice. It's a choice. You're right. So how many hours is a good time? Seven hours? Seven, eight. Yeah. Seven to eight. Yeah. And I know that um, a lot of most successful people are up at 5 a.m. That's right. That's the most productive time of the day. And also, uh, in regards to seven, eight hours, everybody's body is different. So you will get in tune to what works best for your body. But truly, um, you know, basically, you should not need an alarm clock to wake up. Our bodies have a body clock. And when you are well rested, your body will automatically wake up. And 
So when you set the intention, Grant Cardone, I was listening to him as I was running one day, and he said, you know, those that set their list and their intention for the next day and what they're all going to accomplish the next day, that's not success. The success begins with the sleep you get the night before. And you go to bed early, you get a great rest, you are re-energized, you are rejuvenated for that next day, and that next day will explode. And when you're up at 5 a.m. and you're that productive and you're the early bird on the worm and you're, you're kicking it, that is when change happens. But he says, and so do I agree, success begins with the planning of the night before, the sleep that you get. That's good. Because That's without rest, you're frazzled, you're exhausted, and you're not thinking clearly, and you're certainly not productive. Robert says, I typically go to bed at 2.30ish and up at 5 a.m. Would you say that his body's used to that three-hour sleep? if he can function on, on that. Well, obviously he's not functioning very well because he said that his body isn't, isn't adapting to that, right? That was his comment earlier. Um, my body is not adopting with my lack of sleep, but LOL. Right. With an LOL. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Robert, listen to Dr. Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> so... He knows. <laughs> he knows. Um, what are you What are you offering to the viewers, Dr. Stacy? I would love for you to connect with me. You can grab the free guide, 10 down 10 dayscom Just go to 10down, D-O-W-N, 10D, days, D-A-Y-S, dot com. And you can grab the free guide. There's also a mini course there, too, on page two that you can uh, jump into. It's just $7. So you can grab that and begin taking control of your health naturally, just 10 minutes at a time, 10 simple steps that you can implement at 10down10days.com. It's not too late. It's not too it's late. It's never too late. Yeah. And, and join me for the free web class. That's on Tuesdays, every Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. 90daynewyou.com. Woo! 90 days new you 90 days are gonna go by regardless of whether you make any move or not that's right where would you be in 90 days if you change nothing and what if you start today and in 90 days you have changed a few things and it's a you're on your way to a new you New health. Yeah, and the outcomes are tremendous. And that's exactly what I share in the web class too, right? If you do nothing, you'll be in the same place, carrying around the same weight with the same health issues and wasting the next three to 10 years of your life trying to figure it out on your own. Or you can step into making simple changes one step at a time where you will see transformation happen within the first week. Within the first five days, people are dropping their cravings and not snacking and not feeling deprived. It's transformational. It's, it's, it's life-changing. Um, I'm jumping on that uh, wagon, Dr. Stacy. I'm going to try that no wheat. Can, can you share your book title again? The sure. One that you it's, had, the the health, it's the Healthy Fuels Cookbook. It's wheat-free, dairy-free, sugar-free, gluten-free, and delicious. And where can and you look at that? Um, I'm trying to think of the easiest way. Um, you can register for, oh, I can tell you. You can register for the um, web class mm -hmm. at 90daynewyou.com. And you have the opportunity to purchase my bonus bundle, which includes not only a copy of my cookbook in this form, but it also includes a copy of Heal Your Health book and my 30 day meal plan Ooh. that's all included and it's for 39.95 plus 6.95 shipping and handling all of that is in there it gets sent to you and you also get the pdf copy right away that that's, so a, that's a steal okay it is. thank you thank you that's you're awesome. welcome that's awesome so you 
You just go to 90daynewyou.com. 90daynewyou.com. And um, and if that particular, because I have a split test. <laughs> so if that particular page doesn't show up for the bonus bundle, just email me and I'll give you the link and then you can grab that too. Awesome. So we're going to put a 90daynewyou.com. Uh, we're going to yes. put that link under this post. We're going to make sure that people can um, can connect with you and take advantage of all your offerings. Dr. Stacy, you are a blessing to this world. Um, and I'm, I'm so glad we finally connected, Dylan. Yes, me too. And thank you so much. I learned so much today. It was, ah, <laughs> I'm, I am a so happy that we had this conversation and it's like you said nothing happens without a reason there's the reason we had this conversation today if you're watching this show Robert um, you, there's a reason that you uh, stopped on this particular live show and take advantage of the knowledge that you have learned today boost your immune system naturally because your health is the only most, the only important asset you have in your life, isn't it, Dr. Stacy? The most important that's asset. Ex you have. That's exactly true. And you know, Dahlia, when you said that, you know, your mind was blown, you just, you couldn't believe the things that you learned today. That is exactly the response that I receive every single time that I'm interviewed, that I'm sharing my web class, that I'm doing any teachings or trainings people's minds are just blown by how easy it is with stuff that they didn't even realize was going on inside their bodies. And it's not hard. So I invite you to step in. Um, so thank you, Robert, just posted your 90 day new you. Um, oh, thanks. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Robert says, the reason why I'm so tired is that because I'm moving to my new house at the same time as working. Dr. Cooper, I will visit you. Just cook the chocolate brownies. What chocolate brownies is he talking about? <laughs> you don't know about the chocolate brownies? Oh, Delia. So when, when we were, um, when we used to have live events, everywhere I go, I take my chocolate cake. Re sorry. I take my chocolate cake recipe with uh -huh. me. Uh -huh. And that is exactly why I do it is because, you know, I will have this tray of, of chocolate cake and I will offer it to people who pass by and I'll say, oh, would you like to try a piece? Oh, no, I'm on a diet. I'm diabetic. I'm wheat free. I'm gluten free. Oh, I'm gluten intolerant. I'm this, that, the other thing. And I'll say, well, it's wheat free, dairy free, sugar free, gluten free and delicious and easy. And it's diabetic friendly. Oh, well, in that case, then yes, I'll try some. And they are blown away by how delicious it is. And I will tell you, it only takes seven minutes to make. My son, Jake, made it for his oh. grade six class all by himself when he was 12. And it's that easy. All of the recipes in my book are that easy. It's not a diet. It's a lifestyle. You still get to eat your favorites like chocolate cake. And that's why it works. You're not counting calories and you're not... Um, depriving yourself of all of your favorites and so yes the chocolate cake is something that i take everywhere and we just make it a little bit differently uh, so the picture is on the other side or oh, that's the recipe best ever chocolate yeah is that quinoa yes oh what exactly wow. okay well i'm getting myself one of those for sure Thank you Alrighty. so much, Dr. Stacy. That this was You're a welcome. blast, a blast. So w uh, worth waiting for. I want to thank you for giving us your time. Thank you so much for generously sharing a little bit of your knowledge. Uh, I know that you are uh, just an amazing woman. Uh, that has gone through a lot of experience. You have a lot of knowledge to share. You can help people who reach out to you. And I encourage whoever is watching to reach out to Dr. Stacy 
and let her get you your ultimate best immune system. Uh, so is there any last words, Dr. Stacy? I just want to thank you, Jelly, for, again, helping me spread my message to everyone that we can reach, because that's truly my goal and my purpose. And I'm deeply grateful for your, your show and your program and your audience. And I look forward to working with you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. And for everyone else, thank you so much for tuning in to Della's voice. As always, this is Della, hoping to spark your soul. Take care. Till next time.